Hi, I'm Stephen Sutton, and today I'm going to talk about a type of tandem mass spectrometry, triple quadrupole mass spectrometry. So, what is it? Well, as the name implies, it's a mass spectrometer, and it sorts analytes according to mass to charge ratios. It's very sensitive and extremely selective, much more selective than the traditional uh, quadrupole mass spectrometer. And it can also be paired with many different types of ionization techniques and a plethora of separation techniques. So all, all of the different combinations of ionization techniques and separation techniques means that the triple quadrupole mass spectrometer can analyze a huge range of different analytes. And uh, as you'll see over here on the right, we have an HPLC hooked up to a triple quadrupole. Here's the typical hardware layout for a triple quadrupole. Uh, first, your sample enters through the sample inlet, and this can either be done through a direct injection or coming out of a separation method. And it'll enter the ion source, which is usually electron impact, but it can can be a lot of other things. Um, these ions leave the ion source and are accelerated through the first quadrupole, which is, filters them according to their mass to charge ratio. And then those that make it through will enter the second quadrupole or the collision cell where the ions will collide with collision gas and fragment further. And then those fragments will be accelerated through the third quadrupole where they'll be filtered again according to mass to charge ratio until they reach the detector which is usually an electron multiplier. So how does it work? The first and third quadrupole work as mass filters uh, based on this setup right here. There's four rods and all four rods have two different voltages applied on them. Uh, two of the rods have a negative DC voltage applied to them while the other two have a positive DC voltage applied to it and all four rods have a radio frequency AC voltage applied on them. And as ions are being accelerated through the quadrupole, the voltages, both AC and DC, are scanned simultaneously. And for every voltage that is scanned through, there's a specific and small range of mass to charge ratio that will be able to make it through the quadrupole at that particular voltage. These are called your resonant ions. Now the rest of the ions will veer off and collide with the rods and lose their charge, become neutral, and then they will eventually be sucked out by the vacuum pump. And then the resonant ions will go through the quadrupole, go out the exit slit, and if it's the first quadrupole, it'll go into the, they will go into the collision cell, and if it's the third quadrupole, they'll go on to the detector. Okay. Now, in the collision cell, the collision cell has usually an inert gas, such as argon, pumped inside of it, so that as the ions are being accelerated through the quadrupole, they collide with the inert gas and it causes them to fragment even further. Now, unlike the first and third quadrupole, the second quadrupole does not have any DC voltages applied to it. There's only the radio frequency AC voltage. And this is because in the collision cell, we want all of the ions to make it from the second quadrupole to the third quadrupole. And then ions will pass through the third quadrupole, be filtered again, and then eventually reach the detector. Now, where the triple quadrupole gets its utility and diversity in what it can do comes from the different modes that you can operate it in. First mode is product ion scan, which is where the first quadrupole scans a selected mass to charge ratio, or a few select MZs and those select MZs will pass into the collision cell fragment further and then the third quadrupole will scan a range 
of NZ. And then we have the precursor ion scan where the first quadrupole is set to scan over a range of NZs, which will then pass into the collision cell fragment further. But then in the third quadrupole, only a selected MZ will be able to pass through and therefore reach the detector. And then finally we have the neutral loss scan. And this is done by ha having the first and the third quadrupole both scan a range of MZs. But if you have neutral fragments such as water or carbon dioxide being formed inside the collision cell, this will show the loss of those neutral fragments. Here's some typical data from a triple quadrupole mass spec. Now what this is is overrun the total ion current was measured but it was measured at specified mass to charge ratios and what this is is the different specified mass to charge ratio chromatograms laid over each other but all this co data comes from just one run and this is the kind of data and the kind of selectivity that you get from the triple quadrupole now let's look at a real life study that was done with a triple quadrupole and in New Zealand they have a problem with a drug that used to be legal but is now illegal one benzylpipirazine or BZP aka the party drug and this drug gives effects to the user very similar to ecstasy or amphetamine and is also addictive and that's why it's now legal but now that it is illegal they need a way to test for the drug well they've been doing tests on hair samples for amphetamines for a long time so they want to develop a method where that they can not only test for BZP in the hair but also test for BZP in the hair samples with those samples already been prepared the same way that they prepare them for all their other drug tests and then on top of that the method has to be very very selective because you can't have false negatives or false positives because there are legal implications and it also needs to be very sensitive because these compounds are in very low concentrations in the hair so it's got to be able to detect very low concentrations so they set up a method where they analyzed uh, these hair samples by HPLC coupled with triple quadrupole mass spec and here's some of the results and if you look on the left you'll see uh, the top row is a mass spec for BZP and then to its right is a mass spec for B deuterated BZP and as you can see you get, you get very very you know you get clear signals and then if you look at the chromatograms down below them those were actually used uh, for the actual analysis and as you can see the baseline is extremely clean because of how selective the uh, method is so you eliminate a lot of the noise but if you look to the right you can see uh, some of the concentrations of BZP that they detected in their samples and the cutoff for what would be considered a negative test is 0.2 nanograms per milligrams so that or lower is considered a negative test however they found that they could detect 0 0.086 nanograms per milligram of BZP with an R square value of 0 0.9 0 0.99 so what they found is not only is it plenty selective enough but it's also more than sensitive almost twice as sensitive over twice as sensitive is what they would need to run this test. So it just shows that uh, the extreme selectivity and sensitivity of the triple quadrupole mass spec can be used for a variety of applications.